Hey guys, it's the Friction here, Attack of Tank 1-2, to call me. I don't really care. Welcome back to World of Tanks, where we are today taking a quick look at the good old T-30. This used to be the American Tier 10 heavy tank until it was replaced in 2012 by the T-110E5. This bad boy <laughs> has a 155mm gun that you guys most definitely know of. If you have played any of the American tank destroyers and have managed to reach tier 9 or tier 10. Because this is the gun that you have on the E4, the E3, the T95 and the T30. Now this 155mm gun is really powerful. And what is really cool about this tank is basically that it is the T95 without any of the very glamorous armor but with a very nice and heavy turret that allows you to actually move around faster and also peek over ridgelines that you aren't actually able to do with the T95. Now couple that with 10 degrees of gun depression, this thing becomes a serious threat, threat when you are on a ridgeline. Now you do not have the same gun characteristics you do not have the same nice gun handling that you have in the t95 you also do not have the same dpm if we just compare it real quick the dpm on the t95 is a bit better than on the t30 um, but the t30 has the flexibility of having a turret now obey the turret does not turn very quickly the turret is still there and allow you to <laughs> actually engage targets on your side if there are several tanks and not just tanks in front of you, but maybe also on your side, you don't have to turn your entire vehicle. So having this 155 mm gun with this big ass turret really is going to allow you to do a lot of damage. Now the gun characteristics, aim time, dispersion, all of that is not too bad. I'm using a crew that is pretty subpar because retraining crews every single time i'm you know getting an old vehicle back is really exhausting and i thought that wargaming would change that you know as the very first thing because having like one crew for several tanks would have been amazing and it should still be one of the priorities for world tanks makes things so much more easier and accessible now we already know the gun is great, we know it has great penetration, we know we have great damage output with this thing. What we don't know is how reliable is the armor. Now the reliability of the armor on this thing is pretty atrocious if we're just looking at the hull armor. The hull armor on this thing is pretty much throwaway. 102 millimeters at the front, 76 on the side, 51 at the rear. Now this is a tier 9 vehicle, you're going to be facing tier 10 tanks. They have more high explosive pen than you have frontal armor. Well, not every single vehicle, but a lot. Um, for example, the Conway. <laughs> if the Conway launches high explosive squash head rounds towards your frontal armor with 203 millimeters of penetration or 200 millimeters of penetration, you're not going to be looking very nice with your 102 millimeters. Well, always depending on uh, from where you're shooting, but most of the time you're just going to go right through and it's going to do some massive damage. But it's a different story if we're looking at the turret. 279 millimeters of armor on the turret with a very big gun mantlet at the front. This gun mantlet is over 279 millimeters thick on certain parts. And you can see certain areas you're going to have a really tough time going through. Now, the rest of the turret at the front is also fairly heavily armored with 215 millimeters, um, which is effective 293. Doesn't mean that this thing is impervious or invulnerable to rounds. Um, let's say very high penning heat rounds will go right through your turret. You have to be careful when you're facing a Yak Panzer 100. Um, you have to be facing, you have to be careful when you're facing Chinese tank destroyers. When you're facing other tanks with over 350 millimeters or 300 millimeters of heat pen. Um, that is going to be a bit of uh, a hassle, but not every single time. You can still see the armor is quite effective. And this makes this tank actually pretty damn interesting. Now, couple that with a mobility that I would say is on par with other heavy tanks, you can certainly keep up with other heavy vehicles and just go into a position and slugging it out um, when you're using, you know, like the, mo the ground also as cover. You're using little mounts, you're using rubble, 
uh, anything to hide your level play just to peek out with your turret and that kind of allows you to um, play this thing very aggressively not as aggressively as the t95 you're not going to be a breacher but you can actually play this thing greatly on the ridge lines like this is a really good ridge line warrior and i think we have already said more than enough let's jump in some gameplay and just see how well the t30 does in the year 2024 um and if this is one of the best tier 9 um tank destroyers out there there are actually quite a few that are really great um this is just one of them we're going to be covering the conway soon we're going to be covering the Jagd Tiger, the Waffenträger of Panzer IV. Uh, we're going to be covering the Stritzwagen. All of them very unique in their own way. And probably a very good kind of showing for World of Tanks and Tier 9. Because Tier 9s are so exceptionally interesting. And they are in a great spot. Today we're only going to have one replay. Because I think it does kind of show off. All of the abilities and all of the features of the T30 um, and I think we can kind of see the strengths and the weaknesses that this vehicle does possess and to be fair I think the T30 could be one of the best tier 9 tank destroyers because of its turret and the large amount of damage it does with every single shot I think it basically is a very flexible tier 9 TD that you can play very much like a heavy tank because it used to be a heavy tank. Uh, the T-30 back in the days used to be the tier 10 heavy for the Americans. And uh, the reload time was actually better. You had better DPM with it. Um, I think you had the same amount of alpha. Before they changed uh, the alpha for the heavy tanks. Uh, with the 155mm guns. And where it is now I think 650 for the E-100 and the um, 60 TP. This thing used to have the full 750 it still possesses today. Although the T95 um, does also make a very strong um, argument for being one of the best tier 9 TDs, I think the T30 just is a little bit more flexible and we'll see that in this replay. Uh, we're going to be doing things that we cannot do with the T95 and probably the very first thing is getting into this position. Uh, we're playing on fjords and uh, we have taken this middle part without really any um, enemy um, resistance there's only an E100 that we're now farming together with an Amex 5120 and an E3 and uh, we managed to hit both the E100 and the EBR90 at the beginning of the battle for um, a whopping 1747 damage in total with two hits now that is the beauty of the T30 and that's the beauty of the 155mm gun. But that's not like the only vehicle that possesses this kind of caliber. Um, but, you know, having this gun, having that amount of penetration, and most of the time being able to go through any armor, even most of the, some of the heaviest armor, like the Type 4 has, um, is just a, a very satisfying experience in of itself. And uh, if you're looking for a tank destroyer um, that is able to perform very um, reliably in terms of being able to pen its targets, the P-30 at tier 9 is probably a very good choice to go forward to. Um, the APCR penetration is pretty good with 220 millimeters, but it's not the same that I would, I would have expected it to be better because the standard pen is already um, like very high with 276 millimeters of penetration. But yeah, having a 155mm gun with that caliber and how World of Tanks kind of um, has penetration working, I think uh, you just have a very reliable vehicle that um, is going to go through a lot of tanks that are even trying to side scrape because you can just overmatch their side armor. That's what I've noticed. I, I was able to overmatch a lot of um, turret armor on top. I've been able to overmatch a lot of side armor on certain tanks that were side scraping. Especially the Super Conquerors, the uh, Conquerors, the M103, you know, all those heavy tanks that uh, have okay enough side armor, but not good enough to really survive uh, a T30. And that's, that's the beauty of having a large caliber gun. So right now, we're now making a play. Uh, we're trying to push the enemy that uh, is trying to go through the south. Uh, but we're already down to only 500 HP because we got hit twice by... 
um, the Leopard one. We got hit by artillery and we got hit by the object 777. And one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you're playing a T-30 is that it's a very vulnerable tank when you're not in a hull down position. Because the hull armor at the front is only 102 millimeters thick. And I think in total you can only have like effective armor of a, about 155 millimeters. And uh, most of these, these tanks already fire more, like, uh, they fire premium shells or high explosive shells that have almost 100 millimeters of penetration. Such as the, uh, let me see real fast, um, I think the Leopard 1 has very good high explosive shells. I remember that the um, British have some very disgusting hash shells. But, yeah, most of the enemies will not be able to go through the front part of our, our vehicle with high explosive. But as soon as they have the side or the rear, um, that is actually a very true and real possibility that you might get pinned with high explosive. So, you do not want to be the one that breaks the front line. That is what the T95 is for. You do not want to be the first one to to push into a position. And sadly, right there, we, we tried to hit the Tiger Mouse. We probably would have killed him as well. Uh, not killed him, but taken off about 800 of his HP. But sadly, the um, Italian Tier 9 tank destroyer, the CC-1 MK-2, uh, decided to move in, and we were not able to actually spot him. So, yeah. In the end, that uh, was not a very good shot, but I would say we didn't really know that the, <laughs> there was another TD coming in. But this game has uh, turned quite interesting now because we have um, just lost a lot of the vehicles that were pushing the south and they still have about, you know, we are on the same amount of tanks and they still have uh, the same amount of HP that we have, at least so far as we know. Um, and we just lose the FV215B and now it becomes a bit more dangerous for us. But having this gun, which is very reliable and does a lot of damage, is always a plus. Uh, we managed to take out the object 777, they lose the artillery, and now it's all about cleaning up a Tiger Mouse, a Leopard 1, a Stutzwagen 1030, and a T110E4 that has been hiding on the island all game long. And look at that, it's just a thing of beauty when the, the shots actually do connect with the target. And uh, yeah, I completely forgot how much of a joy the T30 is um, and I, I, I've always enjoyed the T34 I've played a lot of games on my T34 I've pre-marked that but I kind of forgotten about the T30 because uh, I already had the tier 10 uh, tank destroyer uh, when they released the E4 um, because it was replaced uh, I had the T110 E5 when they released um, the American heavy line and they changed the T30 to a TD so, yeah, I didn't really have to play a lot of games in the T30, but I still played about, I think, before the one patch where they released the Marks of Excellence. Uh, I still had about th almost 270 games in the T30, so I did enjoy it quite a lot when it was still a Tier 10 Heavy Tank and when it was um, switched over to a Tier 9 TD eventually. This is a very cool tank that lives off um, this big gun and at least lives off the turret armor. But I think it's flexible enough that you can play it as a TD that lies in wait or a heavy tank that you know that goes in and supports um, other heavies uh, in a push. Just as long as you're not the very first tank to get engaged or um, the very first tank that has to breach through um, an opening. Well, as long as you have. Um, uh, the ability to go hull down, I don't think you're going to have a really hard time with the T-30. And having this big gun, you're not going to have a hard time penetrating tanks. And uh, you barely have to utilize premium rounds when you're playing this tank. So yeah, the T-30 is probably a very good choice. And in the year 2024, it's still going strong, which is a very nice thing to see. So yeah, that basically wraps it up on my... Um, reporting on a t30 if uh, it's still worth the grind and i think the entire american tank destroyer line is a lot of fun um doesn't matter if it's the turretless uh, tank destroyers or the turreted tank destroyers i think both of them are great and uh, maybe we can do a, a full analysis of the tank destroyer lines uh, or maybe the tank lines in general so that we can have a little bit of a, an outlook for 
or at least I can show you guys my opinion on um, certain tank lines and uh, you guys do have a little bit of a, a parting gift before I um, before we uh, end the world of tanks features either way thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video until then have a good time